Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're bringing back the one and only Sunil Pai. Sunil, how you doing? Hey, man. We need to stop bumping into each other like this. <laughs> Uh, so I, at this point, this is your thir third time on the show, I think. Third. Um, third time. Exactly. Every time we're talking about something new, every time it's very exciting for me because it's something that I find very fascinating and haven't had a time, a chance to really play with. Uh, but before we talk about what today's episode is about, let's talk about you for a minute. For folks who haven't seen you before, uh, do you want to give us a bit of an, actually, you know what? We need one anyways, because things have changed since the last time we talked. So let's hear about you. I mean... Hi, everyone. My name is Sunil Pai. I am the founder, first time founder. Oh, it's still weird to say that. I'm the founder of uh, something called Party Kit, which is a product platform tool chain for building multiplayer collaborative apps. Uh, uh, you might know me from my time in Cloudflare when I worked uh, on their developer productivity team and rewrote their CLI from scratch. Uh, I spent a year on the React team, and we don't talk about that. Uh, I spent a year in a bank. I refuse to talk about that. Uh, you might know me from a CSS and JS library. That was uh, that was a fun time. Uh, I made a CSS and JS library called Glamour. Uh, I've done a bunch of things. Um, and um, mostly it's been about, oh, about 20 years of JavaScript now. At some point, I went from being the youngest person in the room to being the oldest. and still haven't adjusted to that. That was a weird you know transition I mean? for me as well. Yeah, <laughs> I I remember being the the one that everybody would look at like, like how'd you get in here? And uh, yeah. now they're like, you're still here. <laughs> you're, still, the you're still here, thing. especially. You know what? Especially with the over the last five years, there's this whole new breed of. Um, I, I don't want to say thought leaders because that's kind of a slur to be honest, but like the face of JavaScript has changed. You know what I mean? Mm. That they're all these extremely enthusiastic. They connect so deeply with uh, uh, the audience, I guess. And I'm like, ah. and this, I mean, you're part of this as well, by the way, you're the problem. Uh, they'll spend hours watching a stream and I'm like, y'all like, do you take toilet breaks? I assume you do at some point. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, it yeah, it has gone from being the hey, we were we we are the old hands. Maybe we have a couple of tricks left in us, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been nice to see the ecosystem community grow. Yeah, definitely a little strange to um, to find myself as as one of the you know the the more um, chronologically advanced members of a team. I uh, you know I remember there's it's funny too because I've reached an age that I'm still young, right? I'm in my 30s. But I remember when I was when I was in my teens, uh, I worked at a, at a pizza place and across the street, there was this, this really friendly guy who owned the shop across the street and he was like 32 or something. And I remember, I distinctly remember once saying, you know, he's pretty cool for an old guy. And oh uh, then I got to my 30s and I was like, oh no, this, wait, can we really... Shit, we need to talk to the teenagers. Like, <laughs> it's not old. Thirty's not old. Wait, or maybe it is, and I'm just, you know, uh, fighting time vigorously. <laughs> I was, uh, I was talking to an old college mate recently, uh, and we were talking about how when we entered engineering college, there were folks who were in their final year of college, and we all looked at to them like we used to hang with them, and they were great inspirations for us. We used to learn so much from them. They were twenty one. I have not, uh, like, don't get me wrong, like, uh, young people are, like, great, but I keep thinking to myself that a whole chunk of my life lessons I got from 21 and 22-year-olds, and I'm like, that's, that's a little weird. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hello, everyone. We got a, a great raid. Adam.dev showed up. What's up, Adam and friends? Um, and I'm seeing, you know, Sylvia Vargas is here. Black Tech Diva is here. What's up, y'all? It is great to see everyone. Um, so, okay, so Sunil, you you are a first time founder, right? And I have questions, because I, I'm, sure. I've never, and, and by first time founder, we are saying you have raised venture capital to support a right. uh, party kit. So a, a certain classification of founder, right? Now I've never done that. So I have a lot of questions, um, which I'll, I'll start with an easy one. How, like, what was the experience like? How, how did it go for you? 
so officially i haven't announced the raise yet so no details oh, on the raise but I'll, just let me kidding tell you about hypothetical raise uh <laughs> no 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 it's it's the it's the worst it's the worst kept secret right now anyway but no 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 specifics but let me t- let me tell you what let me tell you how party kit came to be i think like that's useful like how it went from hey this is a nice project to oh shit i think there's a company in here uh, so i spent after 5 years in the uk you get something called ilr which is indefinite leave to do what it means is uh, you don't um, you don't need a visa sponsor anymore you don't need mm. an employer to stay in the country and i thought to myself well the economy is doing so well and it's a time of global peace so what a great time to start uh, my own company i would think um and uh, so uh, and I lo- that's just it i think the one year that i spent in cloudflare was easily one of the best years of my career in fact my entire startup is built on top of cloudflare right now just a wonderful group or a wonderful group of people but a wonderful group of technologists as well like they mm. really showed me how to have ambition in terms of the things you can build and enable for other people so um i figured i'd do like some contracting uh, and i started hanging out with the folks at tl draw so tl draw right. is a startup by uh, steve ruiz and crow great team there uh, and uh, they were dealing with trying to implement multiplayer in the new uh, in the rewrite of the stuff they were doing uh, they were trying to move away from another solution and one of the problems with third party services is that they are third party services when you use one of these solutions for it which is it's a black box in the cloud you don't really have a local development experience how do you do mm. staging environments uh, the pricing is always well it's not usually great. like you're not just you're not just paying for the water and the taps you're paying for like something else um you uh if the third party service doesn't have a feature that you want you have like one of two or three solutions right which is mm-hmm. either you build the feature around their infrastructure or you change your product or you wait for the service to build it all three are horrible options when <laughs> you're building especially as a startup like you don't want, you you don't want to be dependent on them uh and i realized that i could basically enable them by giving them an abstraction layer that all developers are familiar with hey i want to be able to write the code that runs on these things i need a local development thing simply because i want to write tests that run in ci you know like you just want to be able to do that you want preview environments netlify does a great job of this wurzel does a great job of this it generates like a url per github pr and so on uh so i helped them build that uh mm-hmm. to be cl- and to be clear like that like was the deployment platform they built this incredible syncing engine a guy named uh, david sheldrick who's on the team there what a wonderful engineer he built uh, a custom syncing engine with the rest of the team but uh, that was custom tailored for tl draw and they were able to deploy it and uh, we got it to production and so, like we got something working in about like a week two weeks and then within like two months it was in production i don't know if you remember when we were hanging out in november in uh, at jamstack i was showing right. the demo to people mm-hmm. it got like way better even after that and it turns out if you have the right abstraction layer a team of i think there were like four people at the time by the way i think there are now six i don't know um can build a world class experience that has otherwise required insane investment operational excellence and people so what's happened is websockets for example were uh, introduced uh, they shipped in chrome in 2009 the spec right. was in 2008 uh, and for 15 years now roughly the dream of building real time applications everybody has had i mean that's kind of been the dream of the internet but um but some kid will build a game on a weekend like they'll stitch it together it'll be great and they'll try to deploy it and they end up in this hell scenario uh, mm. i gave a talk about this at react miami and italy and who, uh, honestly if you look at me wrong i'll tell you uh, <laughs> the details of and everything about party kit and about the architecture but it turns out you end up having to maintain this massive infrastructure layer simply so that it scales across the world because people will be connecting to it and getting real time updates it's a mess uh so but cloudflare shows up on this uh, on the scene cloudflare introduced something called durable objects in 2020 which is part of how uh, it's a, it's a big part of how particuit is built but there's a lot more uh, and it comes it's a fundamentally new primitive that's 
uh, entered uh, our computing scene, which is you end up having these synchronization points where everyone can connect to and Cloudflare takes care of their routing and stuff that you actually don't want to take care of. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, it turns out, is the kind of abstraction layer that you as an application developer actually wants to use. You want to write code and you want your infrastructure provider to handle the scaling and the uh, routing of these connections and so on. Anyway, so uh, 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 there is a bit of sidetrack. So I built it for, I uh, helped TLDRAW build it. They shipped, it's great, you should use it. TL, their multi, TLDRAW, the product itself is amazing, but the multiplayer takes it to another level. So I decided, hey, I should uh, build this for everyone. It deserves to exist for everyone. Um, and I came up with the name Party Kit, which is kind of a stupid name, but it really hits, like people like it. Uh, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a platform for building parties and building um, amount parties. Of inbound, it's like, yeah, it's a, it's an, it's infrastructure for making parties, like groups of people talking to each other. The amount of inbound interest in, I, I started building it in public. I made a Twitter account, party kit underscore IO started sharing screenshots, gifs, features, a couple of demos here and there. And the amount of inbound interest has been mad everybody's reaching out uh, because they want it. Of course they want it, right? Like, because, hey, they want something that they can use to build locally. They don't have to, they don't want to be distributed systems experts. They want like, oh, a JavaScript object that you can change and synchronize this across screens. Uh, so everybody wants it. So I've been slowly onboarding people, design partners, but also friends. The way that I onboard people, by the way, right now is on my server, I have an array of GitHub usernames. So anytime I add a new person, I literally add a person to that and I do a push. Um, and um, that's kind of how I've been onboarding people. I'm um, like anyway, low, so I started, low key sad so, that I have not been onboarded, by the way. I can literally add you in like five minutes right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but in fact, I just shipped a new feature today that I'll just talk about later where you don't even need to be onboarded. We, we, we'll get to that. Anyway, so the inbound interest was mad. And while I initially started thinking, oh, this will be like a nice lifestyle business to do, I think somewhere along the way, my ambition for it also grew. Once I started looking at like the impact that it could have. Uh, so the reason to raise is two or three things. One, it's to accelerate the timeline. I need to get this into people's hands as quickly as possible. Two, I can't do this alone. I mean, that's literally the theme of the product, which is that, oh, my tagline is everything's better with friends. Oh, such a good tagline. Uh, and it's true. I believe that that's literally like my own personal philosophy. Anyway. By the way, I uh, I am low key pissed that you that you did that because I I swear to God this is not me stealing ideas. At the same time as you as you did that tagline, I started saying coding is more fun with friends as a way of talking about learn with Jason, and I was like, come on. So I'm I'm just gonna take it as a great minds kind of moment, but. Uh, <laughs> Also, hey, how dare you? You know what? <laughs> to be fair, I haven't, uh, I haven't trademarked that line yet. So whoever can file that uh, application quickly right after the session. <laughs> um, and Steve uh, is here, by the way, and has thrown a, a, um, a TL draw in that everybody's playing in right now, which is very fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Actually, wait. Let me just open it up as well. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hey. Woo. <laughs> I look at all the cursors. Oh, I just, oh, just, oh, God. I just, yeah. Oh, all the hays are him. That's Who, his trademark. Do you, word. Steve, yeah. do you have like a, a tablet that you're drawing on or something? Because that, if you can do cursive like that on your dang trackpad, I, I believe that means that we've just become enemies. <laughs> <laughs> just Jeez, really, no, come I've seen him on! Do, no, absolutely not. <laughs> So he upsetting. does this with his, uh, yeah, he's he's written thousands of his. That's his signature word. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, the raise went well. I spoke to so many founders just trying to figure out even if this is like the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is. By the way, everyone is, every founder is, gives, loves to give advice. All their advice conflicts. Mm -hmm. the, it's just it's you get a spectrum of advice you do this no you don't do this you do this which is great for me because i understand what my options are uh but everybody thinks it's hard uh in fact a person that we both know a ceo was talking to me he was like you know what i started a startup back this many years ago then it got harder it got a little harder after that 
Sunil, it doesn't stop getting hard. I was like, this is the worst advice I've heard ever. <laughs> uh, but, but it was good. So I got some money in the bank now, uh, th- doing hiring, building a London startup. And I'm super excited about it because I love speaking to people who want to build this thing that they have believed has been so hard to do for years. And then you get them hooked up in like 20 minutes and they're like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, how is, is that it? And I'm like, yeah, this is how you start. Now let's start talking about product features you want to build on top of it. And they're like, oh shit. Uh, that is just a magical feeling that does not go away. Every, if, yeah, that's absolutely but, wonderful. So, so you, mm-hmm. you, you touched on something and I, I'm, I'm going to take us on a tangent here for a second because you said something that I want to talk about and you just brought it back up again, which is the idea of building an abstraction over like all this technical infrastructure, the the things that, that Cloudflare puts together. And you know, I, I I will be the first to admit that I have always seen the list of features from Cloudflare and I've just kind of backed slowly away from it because it was I don't know what it does. I don't know how it fits together. The examples are cool, but like I don't get it. I still to this day don't know what the hell a key value store is and why it's different from a database. Right? <laughs> like it's it is just the sort of thing that like it there is a very good technical reason for most of these things to exist, but nobody's telling me the story of why. And nobody's explaining to me, like, you want to accomplish a thing, and here is the way that you get to that thing. Um, and so what I think is really fascinating about about what you're doing with Party Kit and what we've seen some other companies do is you're doing something that is is typically frowned upon in the kind of the the general zeitgeist of, like, you know, oh, you're making an abstraction. Like, why would you get further away from the tech, right? But I think there's this really interesting, like, dividing line between abstractions that help and abstractions that hurt, right? And so, like, I'm of a mind that if you if you ship a really big, opaque SDK on top of low-level tech that's actually, like, basically the same as the SDK, you're just changing all the APIs around, you're causing confusion, you're making a mess. Like, this is, like, (sighs) RIP my mentions, but, like, this is why I don't like Tailwind, is because I feel like Tailwind is not fundamentally simpler than CSS. It's just a different way of writing the same stuff that doesn't remove any complexity. It just kind of creates a parallel track of abstraction, and I don't like that. But when I look at something like... um, what a company like Netlify did around deployment, where it's like, well, you push to Git and then stuff happens and your site is live. Or what GitHub did around managing Git. Now, you know, just create a repo and push to it. You don't have to figure out where you're, you know, where things go. You're not setting up a, a server. You're not dealing with permissions and installing Git yourself. Or like the difference between how you used to set up a server in even 2015. You would go to DigitalOcean or a service like that, you would provision a box, then you had to SSH into the box, and you had to configure a firewall and install the things that you needed. And like, this is, you know, I was, I'm talking pre-Docker days, right? And, or I guess before I knew about Docker, and I, you kind of just had to like configure all this stuff remotely, and, and then you would get your service running. Whereas today, you're like, hey, render dot, render.com, here's my, my app, and they're like, cool, got you, it's running. Like, it's like a night and day difference. And and the thing that's really interesting about this is in both cases, they're abstractions. But in one case, I feel like the abstraction slows me down when I'm trying to work on a project. And in the other case, the abstraction is like a turbo booster that just says, hey, all that stuff that used to scare you and make it hard for you to get something done, it's gone. Go build the thing you wanted to build. Um, so... From my perspective, the thing that I find the most exciting about Party Kit is that I've always had ideas that I thought would be really fun if they were multiplayer. And I have I have built WebSocket servers before. And, you know, like we're running the chat right now in the, the corner down here is powered by my little WebSocket server that I built. And I hate it. And it's flaky and it just fails sometimes. And I don't know why. Um, because I didn't go in and build all of the the retry logic and the reconnection logic and the make sure there aren't 15 connections open logic that causes it to overload and fail. So the idea of an abstraction that just says, you want real time, hit this button. And I say yes. And then it's like, cool, now go build features. Ah, oh, what an exciting abstraction that is for me. 
because it means I don't have to become an expert in all of this infrastructure and technology. I can just be an expert in the things I'm, I am an expert in, which is building for the web and having terrible ideas that require real time. My man, this is the entire history of computer science, what you've just discussed right now, right? Which is, hey, uh, here are low level primitives and I think, okay, oh man, like I have a lot to think about this and I need a way to <laughs> convey it without taking over the rest of the hour. Okay, okay, okay. Which is the reason to seek abstraction is optimization. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what are you measuring for optimization? So uh, computers were, in fact, uh, to, to the level where I remember it like, you used to do registered programming. You used to program the processor at that level. That is mm -hmm. what assembly programming is. And if you could figure out, I mean, that's how they sent the rocket to the moon. That's assembly programming. <laughs> yeah. uh, right? Uh, uh, Margaret Hamilton and team. And you want, and the thing though is that it is fraught with trade-offs by having access to everything it means that you can also fuck it up in a very bad way uh, you change the wrong register to the wrong number you add the wrong number etc you the rocket crashes so you want to build an abstraction that puts guardrails that does two things one is it provides safety so that you don't do the wrong thing mm -hmm. but more importantly it is that when usually when you have that kind of constraint you can unlock new optimizations that come into place a good example, I think, is memory management. Uh, JavaScript programmers have never had to manage memory uh, manually, manage memory manually for their entire careers because it started right. off uh, with that. And, and that was because of the work that folks did with Lisp in the 60s or 70s, or whenever they did the Lambda calculus, whatever the hell. Uh, same thing with TypeScript, right? Like, hey, if you use TypeScript, you have to, well, you can still compile if the types fail. Uh, but it makes sure that you're not sending the wrong object types and V8 start your actual JavaScript engine gets a little more optimal by making sure that they're of the same shape as you pass them through things, etc. Specifically with multiplayer, I think, wow, if my competitors are, are my comp I don't like calling them competitors, I call them players in the space, and we can talk about that as well in a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, a lot of these players in the space are incredible engineers. Mm. And one of the pitches that I've seen that they do for a number of their products and platforms is, hey, if you rewrite your app to be completely in this magical way, then we can provide you a number of uh, optimizations. Hey, like we get, get your, your admin dashboard, you can build your own migrations and all that stuff. Like a lot of things come into play. Like here is a magical reactive database in the cloud. And I love those products, by the way, the, the reactive databases. I'm going to hook them up to Particut at some point. Yeah. But, what, but one of the mistakes they make there is, oh, you need to write your applications in a particular way. Now, yes. if you're willing to do that all well and good, but that doesn't gel well with me. I'm a developer. Uh, the friends that, I mean, the first people that I want to impress that I want them to use my product are my friends. I, I mean this when, in a very serious way. like. I need to make sure that the people I talk with on a daily basis, either on Twitter or in the chat, et cetera, that I convince them because I trust them. I mean, I've grown up in this industry with them and we share values, et cetera. And one of those things is we need control over how our application behaves and feels. I think mm -hmm. this just comes from us being user interface engineers. Like that's kind of where we have cut our teeth. Uh, so it is very weird for me to have to use a product or platform where I don't have control of those things, or I have control of it at a very other superficial layer, uh, which is why the abstraction layer that I've picked is one that is way more similar to Netlify and Versa, uh, which is, hey, like deploy your code and we'll handle the boring infrastructure, routing, deployment, scaling for you. Uh, in fact, by the way, uh, there are features that I've stolen directly from Netlify and Versa. So for example, you can, uh, uh, you can generate preview URLs. So for every GitHub mm. PR, it will generate a little preview staging deployment so that you can test it before uh, shipping it uh, uh, to production. Mm -hmm. So important for me. Cannot Absolutely. do without it. Had to build it into the thing. 
uh, environment and uh, environment variable and secret management. Just bog standard stuff. Oh, web standards. Uh, I've made it so that you don't need a custom client to connect to these servers that you build, by the way. You can just use a WebSocket. But what that means magically is that it's cross-platform. Not only is it will it run anywhere you have a JavaScript runtime, so you could connect to it from another server like Node, your demo, etc., mm -hmm. uh, or Cloudflare itself, of course. Uh, but it also means that you can connect to it from uh, mobile apps like you can just make a WebSocket from Swift or Java and connect to these things. Uh, cool. One of the yeah, one of the things that I want to do with PartyKit is make sure that the size of the market dramatically increases. It's because uh, I'm just relying on standards over here. Uh, but there are trade-offs to this thing as well, right? Which is, for example, one of the big trade-offs with PartyKit right now, which I'll solve later, is concurrency because we use these little synchronization points which everybody connects to. It means we roughly tap out, depending on uh, how many, uh, depending on how complicated your code is, about 40 to 100 people in a given room. In fact, okay. uh, oh, this, uh, well, I have to refresh this TL draw page. Has it crashed for me? I don't know. Eh. Uh, so, um, it means that upwards of 30, 40 people, the room starts struggling, which is a good trade-off for building collaborative apps because if you have more than 40 people in a Google Doc, you have a way bigger problem, right? You don't really want these people mashing on these uh, things. Uh, we are going to we'll solve the concurrency problem. Uh, and there are some pretty great ideas that I have, but nothing to share today. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was a bit long-winded way of saying I've picked the abstraction layer that I always wanted with building these apps. I think that's that's what I've been trying to say, which is that yeah. I looked at a number of these things, I tried building it, and I was just not happy with any of them. And I think, you know, from, from my perspective, at least, what I've noticed is that um, the the challenge that so many companies have, and I think this is a challenge that'll that'll be true for, for Party Kid and any other company that exists, is that when you enter a space, you see a problem that you have. Right. And and so, you know, in the early days of Netlify or Vercel or whatever it was, it was people who were building the apps saying, I wish it was easier for me to do that. Um, and so those people then solve their own problem. But then you're working on the solution and you're not working on the problem space that you were initially addressing. And so over time, you drift further and further away from the problem space that you're you're trying to address the market. And because when we start, engineers have really good instincts as like, I am my target market. As you start to build the thing, you stop being your target market, but you remember having these great instincts. And so you, you say, I'm going to keep trusting my instincts because I was right about the origin of the company. So I'm going to continue to be right about the future of the company, right? That's why we're here. That's why I'm in the leadership position. But the problem is that you now have different problems. You have the problems of an infrastructure management company or whatever the services that you're providing. So you stop talking to your customers, you stop being your customer. And then when customer research conflicts, the, the urge is then to say, no, 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 my instincts are right, we're gonna do this. Um, and, and I find that so fascinating as a generalized approach that, uh, that like almost as a, as a founder, you have to be willing to start out trusting your gut and then as soon as you gain market share and you're actually working on your product immediately stop trusting your gut say okay i'm not right anymore i can't i can't trust my own opinions because what i'm experiencing are the problems of running my app and my app is removing all of the problems that i have running my app for everybody who's a customer now so I have to use the customer research. And, and what I've noticed is that nobody does this. So all of these companies over time start shipping features that nobody wants, right? And we're watching this happen all over the place where as companies reach a certain level of maturity, they stop shipping things that the developers who love them care about. And they start shipping things that they think they need because it's the things that are like the edge cases of the enterprise deals or the thing that they're trying to solve in the platform that they really want. And that's great, but it just becomes this kind of opaque, uninteresting mess to a lot of us. Um, and I find that to be a really fascinating way of, of like, 
reframing what's going on with a lot of these companies and why we always have new spaces every few years for a company to come in and, and drop a brand new paradigm that like actually shakes things up because everybody else gets too inwardly focused on like their own problem sets. I have a lot to say about this. I tell you. Uh, can I tell you? Uh, I was saying I have a lot yeah, to yeah. say about this. Absolutely. So the first, first of all, it's never been my passion to build a B two B SaaS company. Like I don't go to bed going, oh, I wish like I could change the world with B two B SaaS. I just want to make something wonderful. Uh, but uh, literally, what you're talking about, I was having this conversation just a couple of days ago in another fashion, which is what happens to dev tools companies, which is uh, your first two years, maybe three years, is about capturing the hearts and minds of developers, and then you're like, well, now we need to make money, so let's become, let's head to, let's have an enterprise focus and become a serious company. Uh, party kit, uh, party kit. Uh, I have a couple of ideas for how I'm going to. Well, you see. Everybody has tried for 20 years and everyone has failed, but I think I'm going to do it differently. <laughs> this is the kind of uh, but I have a couple of ideas. I have uh, the first one is the one uh, I think that's uh, that's the big one, which is uh, remember when I said I don't call them competitors, I call them players in the space. Yes. My thesis for my big thesis is that more applications are going to become real time multiplayer anyway. The mm -hmm. other is that I don't believe in panaceas. I don't believe in universal solutions. So what that fundamentally implies is that there have to be multiple takes on the thing. Uh, a lot of these players, they imagine the size of the real-time application space to be like A size, and they try to go after all of it. Uh, but the particular thesis is that it's going to dramatically increase, and mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of space for everyone to play. In fact, yes. the people who need to be worried are company are older companies like your. Uh, I want to say IBM, but are they even a player at this point? I don't know, like Oof. Microsoft or whoever. Oof. By the way, if Microsoft wants to acquire me, have your people contact my people. We'll fix it up. I have scale. <laughs> we can we can figure this out. I have a, a three-digit million number in mind, and if you can match it, we'll work for you. Anyway, uh, but no. So what I do is I speak to all of them. Well, I reach out to all of them. Some of them get back to me, some of them don't. And the people that I do, that who do get back to me, I'm becoming not just friendly, but actual friends with. In fact, uh, one uh, team that I would actually call out here are a New York-based company called Drifting in Space. Mm. Uh, wonderful founder uh, founders. Uh, we align on our values like so much. Uh, their thesis is wonderful. They basically say that we are surrounded by compute in a 10 to 20 millisecond radius of every human being. How do you tap into it? I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's a good one. Uh, and the more you talk to them, the more you realize that even though there is some overlap, you, it turns out that you have less overlap than you actually think. And you're mm. not either you're not interested in focusing on those problems or you have other things to focus on yourself. Like you're like, okay, no, I, I really want, I care about this problem and this is the take that I'm making. on it. But the more I talk to these people, it turns out that, again, not only do there need to be multiple players in the space who like work on different angles of it, uh, but the overlaps are where you start working together. Drifting in space can tap into GPUs on the edge and start rendering stuff that your device is not capable of and then suddenly, if you want to get multiple people looking at the same thing, suddenly it becomes a party kit session. Right. So ostensibly, everything is compute and storage. Like if you look at it, everyone's a competitor. It's such a, it's such a weird thing to say, especially when you're playing like the venture game, and you mm. need to be like, well, this is how we're going to become a billion-dollar company. Party kit will become a billion-dollar company simply because there are billions of people, and everybody is going to give us one dollar. Sorry, uh, that, that, that's my pitch, by the way. That's, that's, I, that's a that's a great pitch. People, uh, if everyone gives me one dollar, I think I can make it work. Um, but uh, but it turns out like there is so much to the hubris on Twitter of thought leaders talking about how they think the application architecture game is solved, and they start discussing the minor details of use effect is so. Um, I don't want to say offensive, but it feels like kind of small minded to me where I'm like you all are like you're missing the forest for the trees. Kind this, of this is I mean, honestly, I've been I've just been like 
uninterested in the the current round of discourse around JavaScript in general because it, it feels like we're we're one. I mean, I th I think I, I've said this before, and I, this is a little bit of a hot take, but I just I've felt like the the React server components stuff feels like cool tech that's solving a problem no one has, right? And and that like we're we're seeing you know these these arguments about milliseconds of performance, but just about any framework out there today without whatever they're promising to ship in the future is fast enough that it doesn't matter if you're thoughtful about the way that you build it. And the problems that make those frameworks not performant aren't actually related to the internals of the framework. It's related to the way that people use those frameworks to build. So the solution isn't in changing the internals of the framework, it's in changing the way we interact with those frameworks. And that that is on us, you know, like what what the promise of party kit is, right, is if you try to set up sockets on your own, you're probably going to get it wrong. So trust this class, this, these world class experts to manage this for you. And that's mm -hmm. the same promise that a Netlify or a Vercel has is when you set up globally distributed CDNs and caching and all these other things, you're probably going to get something wrong. We did it for you and we stress test it every day with hundreds of thousands or millions of websites. We know that what we do works. Stop trying to do that internally. Um, those are the types of abstractions that are going to move us forward, not like, should we like, do we server render like this or server render like this? It doesn't matter. Like the, that's not the problem at the end of the day. Uh, and, and so I feel like if we really want to move the industry forward, we need to be looking at like, how do we build? What, like, what are we trying to accomplish? Not what are the technical underpinnings of this thing, but more specifically, like recognizing that, that JavaScript frameworks, it, that any of these things is a tool. And it's probably one of the least important decisions that you make in whether or not the thing you're building becomes valuable. One of the things, and it's not clear to me whether this is cause or effect, is past a certain size for a company, and I think it's actually a fairly small size. Like the moment you're at like, let's say 20, 30 engineers, uh, the engineering team gets separated from the business side of the actual company. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes also with product, but that usually happens a little later which means that engineers get cut off from thinking and caring about the things that actually matter to the company. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's good because engineering is a hard problem and you do actually like need to spend a bunch of time on that. But uh, in that space, uh, you end up in a situation where, for example, you celebrate launches. Engineering teams do this all the time, right? Like they'll build something for six months, they'll ship it and they'll celebrate on day zero which makes so little sense to me. Like what you should be doing is you should ship, first of all, you shouldn't, uh, uh, you should not ship it after six months. I think you should ship it incrementally and start getting feedback. And that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. But what you really need to do is you need to revisit it in three months, see how it's affected the core business because technology, unless, well, unless you are an actual infrastructure company, but even then you have developers, uh, it's always in the service of users. It's in the service of business. It's in the service of some metric that is not milliseconds to load your JavaScript bundle on the page. Oh my God, now, yes. Some people get lucky, right? You, you, you know what I mean? I, like some people, uh, it, they get lucky in e-commerce where they're like, oh, if we do shave 30 milliseconds, we're going to make 400 more dollars. Okay, cool. Uh, but have you considered a uh, metal? Like, have you spoken to the business? I used to work at an e-commerce shop and uh, another great company, Mintra, we got acquired by our competitors, which is just like my glory story from those days. <laughs> uh, and uh, I joined at a time when everyone was doing the same project, which is migrating a PHP code base to, uh, to Node.js. Uh, and uh, if you've seen the announcements for the last few days, we're moving back towards PHP in a way. Anyway, oh, whatever. That's a whole other conversation. Uh, round and round we go. I swear to you. I. I started having lunch with the folks in marketing because one of my friends was in the marketing team and they were like, I was like, oh shit, like you all care about so many different things. They're like, yeah, bro, like you made it so that it takes like two days for us to like change a banner on the homepage where we need to have a sale. You know what I mean? Yes. 
And I was like, oh, <sighs> let me build. And I swear to you, this is what I built for them. Okay. I was like, okay, let me make you one shitty thing that I'll host like on a box running in the machine. Uh, but, and it was JSX, by the way. I was like, oh, it's like XML, by the way. It's like XML. I was <laughs> doing like an eval of the page. And uh, I was like, yeah, if you put in the URL of the image, etc., it'll get pushed and it'll be on uh, on uh, the site in like seconds. They're like, what the fuck did you just say to me? I was like, no, right. like you can. And I showed them the demo, right? He, so it, so it this was, is... This huh? like I, I I know I'm walking all over you, but I gotta I gotta this please do, please this do. is like my core rant, is that like everybody's talking about you know how do I advance in my career how do I make a bigger impact how do I do all these things and they're they're what they're asking me is like what tech should I learn, and it has so little to do with the tech, it is so much about looking around and realizing that the tech literally doesn't matter. What matters is that all of these people in the business, like a business has three metrics, new signups, retention, and conversion, right? Like everything else is kind yeah. of a sub-metric of those things. Did somebody mm -hmm. sign up? Did they hang out? Did they pay, right? Every other metric is somebody trying to slice and dice those big metrics so that they can have an individually ownable thing so that somebody can be held accountable because accountability is good. But when accountability turns the metrics into nonsense, then it's not good anymore, right? Now you're now you're just playing these games so that you can have something to own and you're you're ultimately straying further and further from the light of God or whatever you want to call it, right? Like you you mm -hmm. just end up in this this situation where you are you are building things that don't matter anymore because you cut up the metrics in a way that didn't mean anything anymore so that you could then be part of I don't know, the the team that got the highest score on the meaningless metrics game. Like it it's it's What's actually important, what's actually moving the needle is go out and have conversations with real people who actually use these things. That can be internal stakeholders like the marketing team. It can be external stakeholders like the people who pay you and understanding what they're actually suffering from. And then don't, don't worry if your pet solution doesn't solve any real problems. That's fine. It is very fun to play with code, but it's not always the right thing to do. Sometimes you got to build a boring thing that everybody wants so that they'll pay for it instead of the fun thing that's very technically challenging because you would be excited to build it. And the, the whole... Like I, I've, I tweeted about this a while ago and it was really inflammatory. Everybody got really mad, but I said that I actually think more damage has been done to businesses by really engaged, passionate developers who treat their job like a hobby where they get to do fun projects and they chase things they're excited about than by people who just punch the clock and file tickets and, and do tickets. Because if you've got a list of to-dos requested by the company, by customer research and whatever, and all the passionate developers are going, that's boring, I'm going to work on this instead, how much damage is happening to the company over time? It's immeasurable. I happen to believe also that this isn't... Um, I don't think they do it purposely. Culturally, simply because we cannot... I don't think anyone has... I don't think we have the vocabulary or the systems to talk about product engineering in public, mm -hmm. which is why the thing we talk about is we talk, and there are very impressive engineers who work on very hard problems, which make sense in the context of their thing. Let me put it this way. The reason that we glorify framework and library authors is because it looks like very cool engineering and it is very cool engineering. Uh, but unfortunately, it also means that every person wants to become a library or framework author. Where I'm like, do you know how much money there is in product engineering? Go have lunch with your salesperson and uh, chat with them, ask them what they want. Build them a shitty prototype to change their banners and that's, you will be a god in your, in your circles. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, look the, at all the so, stuff that we yeah. actually pay for as companies. Like all of the, if, if you look at where the checks get written for the average startup, it is not for the frameworks. Frameworks are free. What you're paying for is the accounting software. You're paying for the little tool that trades notifications between all the platforms everybody wants to use. You're paying for the project management thing, the content management thing. Like all of these tools are tools that are making doing the job easier. The, the flashy tech is Aside, it's it's an incidental. It doesn't matter, right? Like I was looking at this up. I was looking this up the other day because I was I was writing an article where I was I was kind of making the claim that um, I think we're seeing a shift in the space where I I actually think React is going to jump the shark here a little bit and start sliding toward being like jQuery, where it'll be heavily used everywhere, 
but not really recommend it anymore. And the comparison I was making was jQuery, right? And I was like, you know, jQuery, no one would say like, you should start with jQuery, but it's still everywhere. And so I looked up the stats. Did you know that jQuery is still powering 77 plus percent of the entire internet according to W3 stats? I see that uh, a whole bunch of that is, I think literally just WordPress in fact. It because definitely it be could be, still, and think, but yeah. by comparison, React, which is considered the dominant framework, powers about 3.4%, right? I saw that. So it's, it's just this, this very, like, we live in this bubble where we think that the tech matters, but three quarters of the internet is being powered by and making money from tech that every one of us thumbs our nose at. To be clear, I think those stats also don't include like apps behind login walls and stuff like that. But no, you're uh, you're right. You know what? Um, I think React is still incredibly useful, but we need to start talking about React like an ingredient and not the meal. Does yes. that make sense? Yes. That is that's that that's the uh, like even server components. I like thinking uh, like the server components discourse is always around the, well, what is the format on the wire? How do you do server actions? The really powerful thing there, I think, is more of a, I can click together little Lego blocks that like define the whole stack. So now mm -hmm. I can start thinking about my actual application in terms of, instead of this lasagna layer components, like more like full stack components that like click into each other. And the nice thing about that is those stacks if you look at it vertically, those are business concern stacks, which is mm -hmm. nice, which is like, oh, this is the search page component, which encapsulates metrics for so, uh, so on and so forth. And you can start talking about it as a portion of the business because it usually aligns with a team uh, in your actual business, in your actual company. The reason I started doing party kit, right, by the way, ooh, that's my segue into what I'm Here we doing. go. Uh, is because I started, is because the desire has actually like ramped up in the last two or three years. It turns out pandemic or not, but still it, it just in the way that we deal with technology and technology mm -hmm. products, there are like people who spend, there are millions and millions of people across the planet who spend four to eight hours a day looking at their computers, staring at documents, code, design, some artifact or the other. Uh, Real-time multiplayer is just one type of collaboration. That's the other thing that I learned while doing it. It is a very hard part of the collaboration space, uh, and we will we solve that for you immediately. You should just use it for that. But it turns out the collaboration space itself is also like so wide. GitHub mm -hmm. is collaboration. Email is mm -hmm. collaboration. Hey, can you jump on a quick call with me? That's collaboration. Uh, and there's going to be there's going to be years of product thinking going into how to do that well. One of my realizations from the pandemic when it came for remote work, right, is that senior engineers loved it because, mm -hmm. hey, like, we don't have to deal with so many meetings anymore. I like meetings, by the way, but I think most people just do meetings wrong. Uh, ju junior engineers absolutely hated it, and there's a very specific reason for it. The job of a junior engineer, and when I say junior, I mean like one year out of college, just started, etc., is to literally sit right next to a senior engineer and learn. And I mean literally. The feedback loop has to be seconds long. Yes. But the moment you put them in different buildings and in houses, then they end up having daily sync-ups, not even daily usually. Like they'll do a one-on-one -on -one every week. Or their GitHub PR will take a 24-hour review cycle where you'll put it and then you'll see comments later. Something that used to take uh, that used to take seconds for review. I was taught uh, web development by someone named Ramya Adanki uh, back in my contracting days. Amazing, she was so she was so good. Not only did I learn a lot by sitting right next to her and seeing how she would code, but I saw how she would use her keyboard very simply like, oh, this is why shortcuts are like kind of useful because you have to get fluent to the point where you're not really thinking about the keyboard. That's yes. why typing is a good skill when you're programming, not because of some word count or something. It's because you want to be able to translate. How do you, how do junior en engineers learn that? Like where, where does that happen when your review cycle is a day long and you don't really know what you're doing? That's, Honestly, chat that's GPT actually, is such a boon for people like that, right? That's one of the reasons that I've been pushing on streaming. 
is I think that it's one of the only places where you get to watch somebody work and see not yeah. like the polished end result, but like, here's where I screwed up. Here's how I worked through my bug. Here's all those things, mm -hmm. right? But you're absolutely right. Like we, the, the, the solution for how to get a junior engineer onboarded in a remote environment, we don't have it yet. And I've watched companies with the absolute best of intentions completely fail junior engineers because we don't have the mechanisms to, to like, and this is like, you know, I, like I failed junior engineers and I, I have done, I did every, like we, we had big plans. We had structure. We had di first day of school docs. We had like really well-defined tasks, but we didn't have a way for them to just be in the room where somebody could notice that they were stuck. Instead of making them ask for help, you can look over and you can see somebody like hand on the head and you go, hey, what's going on over there, right? The, that yeah. type of environment, we don't know how to do that remotely yet. I'm, no, I'm the co-pilot, man. There are so many companies and teams that refuse to use co-pilot for woo-woo reasons. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. That is such a big help when you're alone mm. and you don't have someone you can ping and or the people that you ping are either busy and you need to know it like right now. You know, I think the collaboration space, sorry, go on. I, I was going to say, uh, one of the reasons that I stopped using Copilot wasn't, it, it was because Copilot kept like putting stuff into my doc. Um, but I just, I just saw one that I thought was really cool. It's, it's called Cody. It's from Sourcegraph. And the way that they've done it is you right click on some code and say, ask Cody. And it's like, explain this code at a high level or in detail. And then it kind of opens up a sidebar and it just shows you like this code does this thing. It takes these parameters. That's what these mean. And then it outputs this. Here's what it does if something goes wrong. And it's just this really nice, like human readable explanation of what a chunk of code does, which is brilliant, right? Now, I don't really want anything to write my code for me, but I love the idea that, it, like, I, I I was kind of putting it through its paces and I asked, uh, I highlighted something. I was like, what what files call this function? And it gave me a list and said how, and I, and I could immediately jump through to find, like, all the different use cases and understand, like, where they were related to in the, the rest of the code base, which is exactly what I would have done with a, a, my, you know, my onboarding buddy if I joined a new team. I'd be like, okay, but what is this for? And they would say, oh, it gets yeah. used over here and here, and here's wow. Like, ah, okay, now I'm starting to understand the idea of the, the like, code assistant tools is because that, that's a real problem. Um, cause otherwise, what am I going to do? I'm going to do a, a find in my whole code base. And then I have to like correlate whether or not they're related and all these things like, no, yeah. that that's what I want the robots to do for me. The other thing is that, uh, we, as a community, we have kind and I blame social media or whatever, which is, uh, we don't have a culture of long form writing anymore. Uh, like as a senior engineer, your job isn't simply to write the code and be very smart about it or whatever. It's to literally write down what your decision process was, why you did the things you're doing. How do you communicate to the, how do you learn how to communicate to the rest of the team? What you did, what you want to do, what you're going mm -hmm. to do, why we are not doing the things that we want to do. I also struggle with this. I wish I was better and I'm going to try making that a core principle of PartyKit. They're calling PartyKit a, a read write company because computers mm. do read write, but we are also a company that reads and writes. Um, and I think that's another thing that we have kind of, otherwise you end up with the same thing, right? Which is like, you just end up reinventing everything six months later anyway, because the original people left or that knowledge hasn't been encoded. Even you just don't remember it. One of the nice things I like about these explain this code tools that I've started doing is Copilot, I think has a new thing called Copilot chat that does something very similar to what you're saying. Okay, cool. Is I'll take, I'll take the explanation, uh, copy it and paste it in the comment. Like, why not? Okay, this now lives in the code base. Go for it. Uh, I, especially the explanations that I like or agree with. Um, sorry, what were we talking about? Just well, we were talking about code. collaboration. Um, and I do, I'm, I'm going to call out the time. We've been talking for almost an hour. Uh, so we've got about 35-ish minutes left on the clock. Did we want to code something today? Or do you want to keep going on, on this? I th the thing I want to show is I want to show how easy it is to get started with building a collaborative app. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do it. Let me let me switch us over to the uh, to the view here. Um, I'm going to get us over. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? Here. 
So I shared a link with you in the DMs about a simple to-do MVC app built with React. I like to-do MVC apps. People don't understand why they do it, but I like it because it usually has state, it has interaction, uh, and some kind of data storage, usually, if you wire it up to a database. That's why to-do MVCs are useful, by the way. It's not about Mm -hmm. people building to-do apps, but because it has enough interaction patterns that you learn. But we are going to be not really touching any of those. We're going to use a standard to-do MVC app. Okay. Um, so before we start, I'm going to do a quick shout out. We've had uh, we've had oh. Vanessa with us today, doing all the live captioning. Thank you so much for being here, um, and that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, NX, New Relic, and Plural Site all kicking in to cover costs and make the show accessible to more people, which I very very much appreciate. Um, and okay, so you sent me this URL. No, maybe that URL is not. I think it's, it's private. Really? Oh, wait, let me fix that uh, right now. Oh, it's because the default is that it's private. Yeah, it is private. Hold on. Maggie Appleton is in the chat. Hello, Maggie. It's great to see you. And is saying that uh, everybody needs to ask spicy questions to derail the last 30 minutes. But no, we want to see this in action. Uh, (laughs) Jacob Boulder wants to know what's the best curry? Uh, anything with coconut. I like chicken, and uh, I like chicken. Uh, you have to use thigh pieces, thighs and legs. I don't mm. understand why the Western world uh, prefers chicken breasts. It's too, It's the worst part of the chicken. It it really uh, is. But, uh, uh, yeah. I don't, uh, okay. Health be done. Uh, <laughs> but uh, coconut milk curries. That's the one. People otherwise like uh, tomato based. Some like cashew based. I like coconut milk based curries. It's just, just it's very hard to fuck up a coconut milk curry. Like you can do ingredients based on wives where you're like, you know what, I'm going to put carrots today, some peas, a little bit more uh, of the onions. I don't care. Mm. It's a very good base. It's very forgiving base. It's usually delicious. One uh, of these days, I'm going to get my cooking show off it. the ground, and you're going to come on, and we're going to cook a curry together. It's going to be great. Uh, okay, so I have this repo. I'm I'm at the the React to do MVC. We're good to go. Okay, uh, so um, feel free to uh, check it out and run the npm install while I talk about it for a second. So it's a standard to to do MVC app. In fact, when you run it, you'll recognize the styling. It's that very classic to do MVC example app. For state, it uses something called synced store. This is very similar to MobX, by the way. The API is, in fact, almost exactly like MobX. which is you'll have an object, uh, in this case, it'll be an array of to-dos, and you can do dot push, uh, dot uh, whatever, you'll reach into one and make edits on it, and in the background, it'll like actually do a, whatever, an immutable set. It doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing when you run it, etc. just go for it. Okay, actually, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, open say, this. Uh, uh, I'm in the wrong project right now, so we're gonna open, and I'm going to uh, GitHub. Here, here. All right. So now I'm going to run that. Oh, wait. Probably got to install everything. I only just realized there are a number of comments happening on Twitch. Hi, gang. Uh, (laughs) Oh, my God. This is the stage fright moment. (laughs) <laughs> just need to remember they're all my friends and are judging me deeply for all the words I'm saying right now. That should be. It's not bad. I think everybody is has been very supportive today. Really? Oh, yes. Oh. That's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, I mean, you, you did uh, miss the moment stuff? where people were being gross in the TL draw, but otherwise, That's otherwise fine. it's been great. That's what TL draw is for. TL draw okay. is meant for being gross. Okay, so you see it, and you can type, like, enter something, ASD, whatever, press enter. It just works, right? It makes a thing. This is very standard to do MVC. That's fine. Uh, now, is there a way for you to open up two tabs and put them next to each other or, like, one on top of the other? There sure is. Let's do that. What's oh, my art is so cool. It really is. What's my next tab? Localhost, same. Oh, oh, same, same, same. same. Okay. Okay. Uh, It's not really replicating or anything, but you'll see that it's also a 
whatever, right? So sync store is a JavaScript friendly API on top of a type of data structure called a CRDT. And okay. I, I am not right now typing the word CRDT to see the full. Okay, it's a conflict-free replicated data type. Uh, I knew that by heart. I actually uh, I was just searching my mind. Uh, the typing you heard was something else. Uh, con conflict-free replicated data type. What it means is, given one of these objects, you can make edits onto it, which is usually, hey, change one uh, key value to something else, move it from here to here, delete it, add something new, etc. And uh, it does that very efficiently. Uh, and the nice thing about, uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, the very popular one is something called YJS, which is going, mm. if there's one takeaway that the group should have in this group uh, on this podcast, is this a podcast? What do you call this? We don't know what to call this. We, we call it's this two a, men uh, speaking to each other. There are way too many of us right now. Um, anyway. Uh, anyway, 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 so YJS is a library that is going to become very big. Just take my word for this. You should look into it. Whatever. And use Sync. So Sync Store is a nice JavaScript API on top of it. Uh, so if you look for a file called store.ts, for a store.ts. So you'll see here how it's like actually set up. There's a little type. And there's an uh, there's a type for the to do, and there's uh, an array of to dos, right? Uh, okay. What you can do now with this object is, if you have a synchronization point, you can start sending all the edits to it and start reading edits to it. Okay. What, what it means it is, it'll start using the network to pass all these edits around and end up in a place where they're synchronized, so that everybody's seeing the same object. It turns out this is a very, very hard computer science problem that YJS has conveniently solved for you. Okay. okay. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, if you, what that means is if you have some form of state, some JavaScript object, something, that right. you need to be synchronized across multiple computers, you will use this library. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat this back to you to make sure that I understand it, and I'm gonna go from like state management principles. So mm -hmm. in an app, I have my array of to do items, and the way mm -hmm. that I do that in something like React um, is I would use a uh, I would have an array, I put that in state somehow, and then I'm going to you know use context to put that at the top of my app so that then all of the components can get at it. Right. Or I'm going to use right. something like nano stores or I'm, I'm guessing sync store is what's doing this right now um, so that the the rest of the app can say, hey, give me the store. I'm going to use the list that's in here. And with YJS and, and what we're doing here with Party Kit, you're saying that the concept stays the same. It just continues. And now I'm saying not just in this app, but in any app connected to this browser, I want you to take the same object and then any updates go to this object, and that object just gets replicated across everybody connected to this app right now. Exactly. In fact, what you will say is that every uh, that we are in a session, and mm -hmm. uh, you might have actually seen on the screen the commented out code. So the session, uh, we can give every session a name. You call this an ID or something. So we're calling it LWJ here. So okay. the moment you, you uncomment that bit of the code, Feel free to un uncomment it and uh, refresh your page. Okay, so all it does is it takes it and starts using Party Kit now to synchronize these changes. So feel free to start typing and uh, pressing enter and doing stuff in the to do app, the to do list. All right. So yeah, and are you in here as well right now? Oh, I'm not actually. Uh, I could actually start it up locally as well. Let me uh, do that. Uh, huh. I didn't realize that I could do that too. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun part. But that's of, the whole oh, point of this. Yeah, this yeah. is the whole point of it. So, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to refresh so, my page. No hands. Hello, LWJ. Uh, are you seeing my edits? Because I'm not looking at uh, this. Let's see. Did they go to the bottom? They did. Yeah. So there they are. At okay. the bottom, I'm hands free, right? This is very cool. Like this is this is such a cool way to to work, right? And and the fact that okay, so. Is this the only change that made this collaborative? This is the only change that made it collaborative. It's and, one and line so, of code. So can you walk me through 
how this synced store is being used in the rest of the app. Oh, Just yeah, so that I can, can get uh, my head around, like, like... 100%. Uh, so if you go into app.tsx, just look for app.tsx. Okay. You will see a line which says, hey, const store is equal to use sync store, which is a React hook on top of that store. Do you see it? Yep. And then we grab our global store, which is what we just defined over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's our list and of And now you can read... There you go. Now that store is uh, has all the values, and it'll update every time you make a change to it, either locally or on the network. Okay, so this is the part that is really exciting to me, because I already know, like I've built apps that keep a list of things or that are, you know, doing whatever it is. Right? I I know how to put state into an app on the internet. If all I have to do to get this state to cooperate with other platforms to be collaborative is run that WebSocket server with PartyKit. That's mm -hmm. huge. Like that's, that's incredible because it means that I don't have to change the way that I think about writing my apps, right? Like it, it looks like I probably need to, to migrate over from, you know, nano stores to sync store, but either way, or like, yeah. The the baseline implementation, if you look at nano stores to to sync store it, more or less the same code. Like they're they're gonna be very similar in terms of how you build it. So the migration path there is is pretty straightforward. Maybe a little more intense if you're using something like uh like a big Redux store or something. But even then, you could theoretically just get the value of the sync store and drop it into Redux. Yeah, yeah, you can synchronize this with literally anything else. Let me blow your mind a little bit more, by the way. You are, not running a uh, you are not running a particle server locally on your machine right now. I have deployed a generic YJS backend that anyone can use for any of their YJS apps. So if you want to get started building a collaborative app today, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even need to give you access to particle or remember I told you I whitelist people by adding them to an Eric. Now, nah, screw it. Just use literally that URL that is over there and instead of saying LWJ, just use something else while you're working. And okay. uh, it'll just sort of work. Uh, so that's a new session now, now that you've given it a new, this thing. And uh, it's, I so, mean, it's, uh, and, and this is cool too, because this also means that like, I could use my URL, right? I could, I could set it up where it's something like session exactly. one, two, three, you, yeah, you and then I grab that. this one, two, three out and drop it in here. Yeah, and that's kind of how, uh, by the way, together.tldraw.com, the things that you folks were using, that's also deployed on PartyKit, but it's also using YJS. Uh, will everyone just quickly jump into together.tldraw.com so that we can have some fun? This is the application with a uh, uh, with a drawing app. So it does. that's me, by the way. Right there. Yeah, right, and so yeah, it's, it's very, like, this now. is very cool. Um, and I think we we have we do have to worry about uh, what I've started calling the TTP on a free form app. Uh, that's time to penis. Um, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Can I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go ahead and of pop off this real way. quick. But uh, so, yeah, uh, I shared this online, and we started seeing a form of community moderation where uh, people would come and draw swastikas, but immediately somebody would change that into a tic tac toe uh, uh, grid. Mm. I, that is, I, I just love that that was happening. It just kept happening through the day. Uh, anyway, so this is sharing state, which is, first of all, this has, this has been incredibly hard in the past. And I'm saying it's one line of code. But this is only where you start. Now you can start building your own shit on top of this. I'm working with the folks at Stately. They're running state machines on this thing. Mm. Uh, Eventually, we'll have audio, video. If you want to like build your own Zoom with like one line of code, it'll just sort of work. We'll make that work as well. Uh, so, so, and like the thing that I think is really fun about this is, uh, so Maggie just asked a really good question. Like she says, uh, this might sound sacrilegious, but could a bunch of people just use a collaborative app that isn't deployed, like just using localhost? And yeah, we're doing 100%. it right now. <laughs> So, so like you so could theoretically no, no, no. not even you, you could just be like an internal only thing. It can be behind the firewall, whatever it is, until you get into compliance. So since I guess we're using a party kit server. 
So if you don't want to use party kit, what you end up using is P2P solutions. So you'd use something like WebRTC, which is one of those ah. technologies where you connect directly to each other. The problem with that is that it's hard to build. And that's great. Like you could do that here as well. In fact, the original implementation of this used WebRTC. Uh, one of those problems is that it doesn't scale well the moment you have a lot more people. Mm. Uh, it's also very hard. So for example, if you have a party kit, it means that you can start adding stuff like auth. Hey, only these six people are allowed to do writes. Everybody else can only do reads. You see mm. what I mean? Like you can start implement, you need something like a platform to implement more complex logic and like, well, more features that you can only enforce when you where you're when you're in charge of a server. But so, no, if you want to build simple stuff, just use something like a WebRTC type thing. But it's you end up with like massive JavaScript bundles where you need to have all the logic in the browser right. itself. But now this is gonna this is gonna go really well with ecosystem tools. So if I want to set up a a clerk .dev or a uh, Octa or Auth0 in front of this so that I can set up roles for who has permissions for what thing. That's pretty straightforward. We just have to add some logic here that says, you know, if the current user has, uh, like here, if the current user has the the right permission, then they can mm -hmm. they can go in and, and do that or a role or however you want to set this up. Um, and so, Even again, something it's, like storage, when you do when you do peer to peer, you can't really do storage. Like, how do where do you store the actual data? Where is it persisted? So you do mm -hmm. need like a server for doing these things. Uh, yeah, but those those two like throw it on uh, what like Planet Scale, right? Has this globally distributed database, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do things like uh, something cool that Sanity does, for example, where you would get conflicts if everybody was pushing the same button at the same time. Is they detect whoever opens an individual field within the CMS and they just lock it. They mm -hmm. say like, so-and-so is editing this field right now. And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. great until somebody like has their browser open and goes to lunch, but <laughs> but it's still like one of those, uh, it's, it's like, these are the types of things that we can build. And those particular things aren't actually in the real time, right? So the hard part of this stuff isn't actually the, the real time anymore. Because if we're mm -hmm. just adding something like this to say, sync our store across everybody who's open in this session, what we're doing instead is we're saying, okay, so now we know that this object is gonna be synced between everybody. So we just have to make sure that we're building out the features that we would have built anyways into a, a dashboard or a, you know, whatever app. We need to control how people interact with the app. But now we can say, in addition to controlling the app on your browser, you're controlling it on everybody's browser. So we can think about how this works collaboratively. What if two people are in the field at the same time? What if multiple people are on the same page? How do we show the uh, the avatar stack? If like 15 people are here, can we show who's here? You know that those sorts of things. But those are those are not like how do we get data across the the web socket or you know how do we like you, you were talking about CRDTs, right? Like a CRDT means I don't have to worry about how we merge the data that's being updated at the same time. Instead, I just have to worry about making sure that that data when it arrives gets saved. This is exactly the party kit pitch. You should not be giving a fuck about infrastructure and maintenance. You should be focusing on the product experience and the things you want to build. That is the whole this is the value of party kit. We could have made something which was way more engineering specific. Oh, here's a cool reactive and we'll have, we'll, we'll partner with reactive databases, etc. But no, I want to make sure that on day zero, you start thinking about your product. You build out your product, the things that matter to you, that matter to you as uh, a game developer, as just someone experimenting, building fun tools or as a business. That, that is your job. I'm, uh, that, that is the, that is the experience that I want to enable. So when I go up to these startups who otherwise want to build collaborative experiences and I show them how easy it is to get started, they lose their shit. They're like, oh, fuck, mm -hmm. we, get to, like, we get to work on other things right now. Uh, that's what, can I also tell you something? So I'm just going to drop you a link here to show you what the backend code, if you want to deploy your own thing here is. So if you just open up uh, in the, well, uh, Wait, where did you just I don't put know that? If you see the link that I've shared. Oh, it's here it in is. the got ping it, got it, got chat. It. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay. Right? So I want you to Over open here. that and I want to show you how much code uh, it takes to build this backend. That's it. It's that eight lines of code. Uh, but it and it comes with persistence, by the way. We have we can store your entire document on the server as well. What I like about this is two things. One is sorry, go on. I, so just tell me tell me again what this is doing. So we've got a server. This where am the, I so where am I running the, this? The, the, right. So this is the code that's running on the party kit platform. Uh, this is what we just connected to. Oh, okay, so so what you're saying is the way that this runs is like if I, I, whatever, like I'm running a, a node server, uh, I set up Express, and then when you hit the slash party route, run this code. Slightly differently. This is okay. actually this will you will run this in parallel to your Express server. Look, you will oh, okay. build the rest of your application on like your node stack, deploy it to Netlify. Whatever, keep doing that. That is what that okay. is good for. But the moment you need to do this multiplayer networking, leveraging Cloudflare's like platform, mm. you know, the message passing and synchronizing of the state, etc., mm -hmm. you will pass it through these. This is the code that runs in every single room, by the way. It says, hey, anytime a WebSocket connects to a room, use this Y particuit, which is the library, the open source library that we have built. Uh, to synchronize messages on these web sockets to these rooms. So the first thing here is that it's simple to get this started. But now, because you can run this code, you can see, you can imagine where you'd write code which says, hey, check the login information on this web socket and allow only Jason and Sunil to do edits mm -hmm. or to even see it. That is where the flexibility of PartyKit comes in, where you can start adding any server side logic that you need onto. In, in, over here, that's uh, that, that, that's actually like the value here, which is it's the thing that we started with, which is like, hey, here's a shared to do list uh, was a great starting point, And it will actually get you a long part of the way there. But the moment you need to start adding more logic, more features, etc., on your server side, mm. this is where you do it. So for example, and uh, Yanni will know this, uh, Yanni works at a place called verb.ai, which is an AI assisted um, fiction writing tool. So great, by the way. Uh, I'm a big fan of the product. Uh, but it means that not only can humans connect to this document, but uh, so you can connect an LLM into this document in the same way. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Like if you imagine like five people on a Google Doc, four of them will be humans, but the fifth one is an LLM doing the same thing, making edits. Uh, and... Uh, uh, making suggestions, answering questions, perhaps that you have, etc. It starts. You now have this primitive that represents something important in your app, which might be a document, a story, a song. I want people to. I want the music industry to start using this. By the way, now that we have solved the latency problems, uh, that's mm. part of the other magic. By the way, that it actually spins up in a location that's like five to ten milliseconds away from you. It's kind of cool. Uh, but that is the power of PartyKit, that you can now start deploying your own code onto the servers. If you don't want to use YJS and you want to use Stately instead, then that's what you should do. Uh, that's what Stately is actually doing with PartyKit right now, which is they are running, uh, well, at least I don't know how much I can talk about it, but they're, well, they've mentioned that they're trying it out anyway, which is they're running edge machines, uh, uh, state machines on in th inside these little rooms that okay. have mad collaborative powers but also it just they're, they're doing some really sci-fi shit with this you should just ask david to come here and talk to you about it uh, it's, it's, but that's about, the power. it's about time because, for another david episode yeah right so it's because party kit doesn't give a shit like we are not crdts as a service you mm -hmm. can use yjs if you want to you don't have to use yjs uh we say hey like we give you this primitive where you can run this little code that people can connect to and do things in it what is the code that you would run inside it? Can, do you want to run a little state machine? Do you want to do that? Uh, do you want to set up a little uh, shared Spotify playlist? I don't know, man. Like it's up to you. Like I'm so, I'm so excited to enable the people who have better ideas than me for using this technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is very very fun to see. Like it's it's super cool to see that there is, like. 
there are rules, but there are no rules. And I think that that's the sign of a good abstraction is like the, the things that need to be handled are handled, but the rest of it is kind of like, you can do whatever you want with this. And as you mentioned, you know, that this is too big a space for anyone to say, this is the right way. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that what's exciting about this is that as you're saying, like, this isn't really, a, this is not the time for competition. We want, we're just starting to understand what's possible with collaboration. And so far, most of the things that we've seen that have been really impressive are fairly homegrown. Like the, the things that we're seeing that are really cool in collaboration tend to be things that were built in house somewhere. And so if we can get the primitives out of the way so that anybody can experiment with collaboration without having a big engineering team, without having a big infra and platform team, then what happens, right? And, and providing primitives that let people play without having to become experts in, you know, edge networking means that we now have the potential to actually see the, the Cambrian explosion of these are, this is what we can do if it's only imagination that's a blocker between us and shipping. Man, I got to tell you, like, Exploring all the other solutions in the space, not just the new breeds, uh, the new ones that are there, but even the ones that have been in the past. I have spent enough time in this industry where I expect my tools to be boring. Mm. And a yes. number of these people try to sell you not just, instead of trying to make, instead of trying to bring out the ambition in their users, they try to convince you how cool, how cool they are as a solution. Oh my God. Yes. I don't need an identity. I need a fucking deployment platform, please. That's right. Yes. So what, so this is the, the particle, uh, particle wants to be the most boring fucking part of your app. <laughs> use NPM install, use TypeScript. Uh, you get local development, which means you can run it on your machine, which means you can write tests for it, which run in CI. Uh, it'll generate preview deployments for you so that you can check in your Git, because these are the things that matter to me. Like I'm mm. not interested in looking, I have features to ship and uh, I need to get home by uh, like by five or I'm working from five. I'm closing my laptop and five, I'm going to the pub for a pint. Party kit is going to become so fucking boring that you're like, the moment you use it and you like, I, what I want to get it to is like, look, my web the website sucks right now. Um, it's, I put it together when I was doing the pitch and stuff, and we're going to get a much nicer website, I promise, I promise. It's nice. I do have this little thing where every time you refresh the page, that little graphic changes, which I like, by the way, the, the background coloring. If you, every time you refresh, it's, I, I like Oh, that. that's cool. Uh, uh, but other than that, it doesn't even say much. I'm not going to build another website that looks like Linear or Vercel. I swear to this entire group right now. Uh, but we want... We want to take, like every other technology paradigm, we want to take something that was previously hard, expensive, only in the, do it, you needed to be a subject matter expert in the domain to even use it and say, no, shut the fuck up. We will solve these problems for you. You do what's best for your app. That is what PartyKit wants to do. So that's like every time the word real time is so scary otherwise, right? And I'm mm. like, no, what do you mean? Like I'm sending bytes down the wire and it's rendering HTML in your page. Cool, that's real time, we'll solve it. Uh, uh, I'm way more interested in, f if we do our job right, nobody will be talking about PartyKit, but everyone will be using it. The logo actually won't be around anywhere. By the way, the logo was designed for us by uh, Steve Ruiz. I love it. If you can recognize the handwriting, he's so good at the uh, handwritten style logos. Good. Uh, but we are going to become so boring is we want to be a utility that just says, yeah, we are like node or like demo or I mean, we are just a layer on top of workers anyway, mm. but because we have found what I think is the right abstraction layer and we can unlock these optimize the optimizations we unlock for you is your workflow is you shipping features. I think that's, I think that's a good place to be in. That's yeah. what I, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a huge, that at the end of everything, what we're paying for is the ability to do the thing that makes our company different, right? And every single time I 
go to build something and I find myself, rather than building the feature that I wanted to build, wrestling infrastructure to free up the code to allow me to build the feature, I yeah. it makes me not want to write code anymore, right? Like it's this, it's this draining yeah. and frustrating and then you're looking at it going, that's gonna be a nightmare to maintain, right? Like you just, every time you get pulled out of the thing that's uniquely valuable, you're, you're doing what I've always called undifferentiated labor. You are, you are setting up the same code as a bunch of other people have to set up to run their thing. And, and you know, I remember this back in the days of, of like, why is Docker exciting? Why is, uh, why is NPM exciting? It's because we can take all this undifferentiated labor, make it easy to share, and then give it to people to use so that they can build stuff that matters. They don't have to write a crypto library to like check UUIDs. They don't have to write a, an SDK for interacting with the Discord API or whatever it is they're trying to do. They just grab the package and they're off to the races building the feature that they wanted to build. And one of the major reasons that I think a lot of people don't touch collaboration in real time now is that it feels like the, the bulk of the work is going to be babysitting that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I am very, very excited that it, it seems pretty obvious that that's not actually the case anymore. And now all of my bad ideas that I have for, for building things that would be way much more, they would be way more fun if everybody was playing together as opposed to just you playing by yourself. That to me, like now I'm gonna go unleash hell on the internet because I know that I don't have to think about infrastructure anymore. I can just build the feature. Um, and, and I think that, again, it, it, there's, a, there's a bit of, uh, we just get so excited about the tech because it's fun to build, right? But it's, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between interesting to me and useful to other people, right? And, and I think that sometimes we, we get crossed up. And so what I love is that you're, you're focusing on this from the aspect of, I want to see people build stuff, not I want people to see how cool this tech is. Um, the, and the focus on boring, the the intentionally like, look, you should literally never have to think about this. The, <laughs> the entire goal is that this entire corner of your app exits your mind the same way that running a CDN has exited your mind. You're never going to have to go to your, your data center in Singapore to figure out why you've got latency. Somebody else is doing that for you. You use it every day and you've literally never thought about the fact that there is a server in Australia that is serving your stuff and that somebody has to keep that living, right? You just pay somebody and it goes away. I want all of the pieces of infrastructure and platform management to do that so that I can just have bad ideas and ship them very quickly. Love that. That's the sign of success. I think if we can ship, <laughs> your, if we can ship your bad ideas, that is the true sign of success. Matt, yes. I was just thinking about this, like, so I've been spending the last few months company building, right? So I've not even gotten, the, I mean, I've gotten some time to code, but I've been doing shit with lawyers and accountants. Mm. Uh, just speaking to a bunch of so very fucking special people trying to uh, trying to form the team around this. And we'll do things that, like you said, right? Like the moment the company grows after a while, we'll do things like appeal to the enterprise and have them sign us a six-digit, seven-digit check. But at the core, I think the values of Particut are about two or three things. The first one is collaboration as a company and as a product. The product enables collaboration, the company collaborates with everyone. But the one that I'm very interested, I'm personally very interested in is about ambition. Mm. Look, man, Sunil, Sunil Pai, speaking about myself in the third person, uh, not, not, uh, that's not a red flag at all. Man, this shithead did really so ba badly in college and ended up having JavaScript to save him and like provide him an opportunity to participate on the world stage and like meet wonderful people like you and move to London. Like my life has been, I have like so fucking blessed to reach this. If Sunil Pai wanted to, and JavaScript and cheap internet did that for me. If Sunil Pai wanted to build a collaborative application 15 years ago and learned what had the options available to him then, he would have gone nowhere. The least thing that I can do with this in stupidly named startup, I like the name, it's, so weird. It's, it's stupid, but I like it, is to enable an ambition for people like that. Because for 15 mm -hmm. years, people have been trying to build this type of thing. 
15 fucking years there are games and ideas and things you want to build and all of them have been dashed because they have no idea how to leverage this wonderful compute layer that covers the planet right now. I think Party Kit solves that. That's what I'm excited about. That's my pitch. And what a what a great note to end on, uh, because with that, we are out of time. So, Sunil, thank you so much. Everybody, go check out Party Kit. Like, let's let's go play. Let's let's party. Code is more fun with friends. What is it? Building is what is it? Better with friends. Everything's What's your, better with friends. Everything is better with friends. Uh, so get out there and and go build some stuff. Uh, also, make sure that you go and check out the schedule. We've got just a wonderful schedule. We've got Rich Harris coming on next week. We're going to talk about Svelte. Um, and this episode, like every episode, has been live captioned. We've had Vanessa here from White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much, Vanessa. And that has been made possible through our sponsors, Netlify, NX, New Relic, and Plural Site all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which I deeply appreciate. On that note, hey, we're going to call this one I'm done. So sorry. I'm, Vanessa, I'm so sorry I made you type out all that profanity. <laughs> 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 all right, y'all. We are going to go find somebody to raid. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.